Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So, today we are supposed to start another chapter we told production and growth there is a chapter in your book macroeconomics portion. So, it is called production and growth ok. Uh, exact title I cannot uh, remember it is it is production and growth that related something is there ok. So, in this chapter what we are discussing see you can remember see as you know as we told that in macroeconomics portion of this course we are not discussing the entire macroeconomics rather some selected portions uh, basic uh, three fundamental uh, or three important concepts of macroeconomics that is our target to give an exposure to you people ok. One is national income accounting or GDP growth rate and all those things that is one. Second inflation, third unemployment. These three macroeconomic variables or macroeconomic indicators are very important for any country. So, we are selectively choosing those three or we are putting our attention selectively to those three aspects alone and related to that we will little bit introduced Indian banking system not Indian in general banks how banks uh, plays an important role in modern uh, modern day economy and any uh, an economy's uh, overall financial system also we will uh, discuss little bit ok. So, we are coming to those one by one ok we, we will come back maybe next to next lecture we will come back to those those portions. So, in fact, GDP calculation or national income accounting of a country of an economy we have discussed ok. And on the basis of that growth how to calculate the growth rate of an economy ok. We told that GDP uh, or real per capita GDP of an economy is a good indicator of prosperity of, a, of that country ok, level of prosperity ok. Per capita means per head, per individual, per person. Okay, what is the real GDP, real income of the entire country? That is a good indicator of prosperity level. How much, uh, how much living st uh, standard of living of a country's uh, one representative uh, consumer or one individual uh, citizen is enjoying. And if you see that, as we mentioned, that there is wide variety across different countries in the world. United States, Japan, UK, most of the western European countries, United States, Canada, Japan, this kind of developed countries you will see they are uh, real per capita GDP is very high. Middle income countries like India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, these kinds of countries right, you will see that it is not that much high, but not that much very low as well ok. Uh, uh, very low income countries mostly the African countries if you see. Uh, their uh, per capita GDP, real GDP is very less ok. So, uh, looking at those figures there is a table in fact in your book ok. Looking at those figures those uh, tables is indicating that in dollar terms US dollar terms what is the GDP per, per head real GDP level ok of different countries. Looking at that figure you can understand what is the overall standard of living of a person uh, in those countries right. So, that is an indicator of course, uh, this is the level of prosperity of a country ok that per capita real GDP that is um, one uh, measurement of uh, level of prosperity of a country ok. And how fast a country is progressing ok, how rapidly a country is progressing or developing perhaps growth rate of, the GD of this particular variable real per capita GDP. How uh, fast or what is the growth rate of that uh, that is an indicator how fast a uh, 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 country is uh, progressing ok. So, two terminologies we are telling one is prosperity, prosperity and progress. So, prosperity means level of uh, standard of living already attained ok and progress how fast that is even increasing over time. Okay. And this prosperity one good indicator what we are telling that per capita or per head or per person okay, per capita real GDP 
that is a good indicator of prosperity of a country. And progress growth rate of growth rate of this thing okay, that is progress how fast even uh, this is growing. Okay. So, uh, and growth rate we know how to calculate. Okay. Let me tell you how to calculate the growth rate. Growth rate the different types of concepts are there year on year growth rate means growth rate today over the last year that is called year on year. It is month month uh, month on month means growth rate in this month over the last month like that. Okay. Year on year uh, month on month like that okay. and usually this growth rate is calculated per year in that terms. Say, say two types of so this kind of say suppose yesterday's GDP this per capita real GDP was say Y0 and today's per capita real GDP is say Y1. Okay. So, this Y1 minus Y0 is that change how much as a proportion of what was yesterday this is the growth rate into 100 this many percentage in the growth rate growth rate is in that many percentage in that way you can calculate the growth rate. Okay. So, this is called year on year growth rate some another concept of growth rate is called uh, compound annual growth rate compound annual growth rate C A G R how you can do that say suppose 10 years say 19 uh, say uh, or, 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 or say suppose say 2010 to 2020. Okay. So, every year on year so if you calculate the growth rate of 2011 over 2010 again 2012 over 2011 in that way in between every pair of years you can get year on year growth rate. So, how you can get an overall growth rate over the entire this period 2010 to 20? Do you think that that growth rate, this growth rate, this growth rate you will take their average? That will not give you the right measure of growth rate. How we can get a right measure? On an average suppose uh, this 10 years within that on an average per year growth rate is say R, R, R is the growth rate suppose okay, per year. Okay. So, definitely if that is the case then if 2010 uh, say per capita GDP real GDP is suppose Y 0. So, if growth rate is R 2011 it should be two Y 0 into 1 plus R that will that should be the same uh, that variable is value 2012 that variable is value should be y 0 whole into 1 plus r whole into another 1 plus r because mind that we are assuming the same growth rate over the entire this period 10 to 20 all these years same growth rate per year we are assuming. So, definitely 2012 this should be the case this we can write y 0 whole into 1 plus r whole square in that way you are going to. So, the thing is that first years uh, that variable value is y 0 and t th years that variable value is say y t. Okay. So, it is basically y 0 whole into 1 plus r whole to the power t that equals to y t if you calculate this. Okay. So, this if you uh, manipulate it will be what y t by y 0 will be 1 plus r whole to the power t this will imply 1 plus r will be y t by y 0 whole to the power 1 by t means t th root of that fraction. Okay. That means r will be y t by y 0 this whole to the power 1 by t minus 1. Okay. So, to calculate the compound annual growth rate if you want to calculate you need not uh, having all the intermediate values of y t uh, y that particular variable whose growth rate we are calculating. How you can do that? Only the first year and the last year terminal year if you if you have the values those two values are enough and this t how many in between years say 10 to 20 it will be 10 to 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So, 10 years so t will be 10 
in this particular case okay and in this way whatever r you will get that will be the compound annual growth rate per year in between 2010 to 2020 okay same growth rate if you assume okay in that way it should not be that uh, if you calculate year on year growth rate and take the average over that 10 period that value will come closer to this thing but those that average value should not be the average growth rate over the entire period it should not be that because a growth rate should not be that is not the right way to calculate growth rate okay rather you assume a single growth rate for the entire period and then follow this kind of this kind of relationship okay and and eventually you you can calculate t because this y t value you know at the terminal year what is the uh, value of that per capita real gdp y0 the beginning year to in this particular case terminal year is 2020 beginning year is 2010 okay what is that particular you take that ratio that you take th root t means in in between how many years are there in that way means 2010 to 2020 how many different years if it is 10 year so t is equals to 10 so you take that 10th root of this this uh, fraction okay whatever you are getting minus 1 that will be the growth rate on an average per year in between that uh, time period okay so in that way we can calculate the growth rate of the gdp or per capita real gdp the whatever value you are getting that is a good measure of progress how fast a country is progressing right so that is the thing that is the gdp and related thing macroeconomic overall macroeconomic uh, indicator okay then to inflation inflation we were discussing and in context of inflation or price level overall price level how it is changing from one point to another certain concepts we brought into the picture one called consumer price index overall consumer price index means on a representative consumer or representative household its consumption baskets overall price level how it is growing from one period to another how it is changing from one time point to another time point okay that is consumer price index okay price index at which consumers are purchasing goods and services from the market that is consumer price index similarly we can have another price index called wholesale price index that is the prices at which goods and services are transacted in the wholesale market the name is called wholesale price index so wholesale market uh, the price level at wholesale market usually it is lower than the uh, price level what you and me are purchasing uh, 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 paying when we are purchasing some goods and services from the market no so that uh, in that way another price index called wholesale price index not only that gdp depletor gdp depletor okay that also we told that uh, one sort of price index okay so what is called inflation inflation or rate of inflation inflation how to calculate rate of inflation is nothing but is equal, is basically growth rate of price index okay so this consumer price index as we yeah, we have uh, uh, introduced or as we have uh, discussed in the last class you know that say suppose uh, in india three different broader categories of consumers are there no agricultural laborers industrial workers and urban non manual employees unme category right we have clarified in the last class right so suppose one of those say agricultural laborers for agricultural laborers group okay consumer price index value in 2010 2011 2012 all this until 2021 it is a series of values are given and suppose those values are for a some base period say suppose 2005 is the base period right so if you calculate the growth rate of that price index series say suppose say suppose say 2010 that price uh, consumer price index of agricultural laborers in india for the city bhopal may be say 123 2011 it is suppose 139 2012 it is suppose 142 2013 suppose it is again 138 little bit falls okay in that it is going so if you take the growth rate over these two things say 139 minus 123 by 123 into 100 this many percentage is the consumer price inflation 
okay, price level is expanding at that rate. Okay. So, when you are telling the inflation, you have to simply calculate the growth rate of a price index. If you take that price index as consumer price index, that is called consumer price inflation. If you take that price index as wholesale price index, that is called wholesale price inflation and so on. So, two important concepts we have discussed, growth rate of GDP or national income accounting uh, or, 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 or income of an entire economy, entire country, entire society, how to calculate, what are the factors, where we have to be careful, okay, double counting and all those things, right. So, and how, uh, how one country is uh, uh, prospering or how uh, progressing over time, how fast a country is progressing over time, right. To calculate those things, you can have say GDP, real, per capita real GDP, growth rate of that series and so on. Alternatively, if you want to calculate inflation, you have to have some understanding what is the price index. We have uh, quite exhaustively discussed uh, different types of price index, how to construct a price index or formulate a price index and so on, right. So, inflation, uh, uh, what is uh, called inflation, let me repeat, if you have a price index series, if you take the growth rate of that price index series, that will be give you, that will give you the inflation rate, rate of inflation at which price is, has, uh, uh, has, uh, has uh, or is changing from one period of to the other period and so on. Okay. Now, the question is uh, this, um, so uh, if you can remember when we were discussing 10 principle right in the very beginning right, one principle was there uh, on countries overall standard of living depends of depends on its ability to produce goods and services that we have already discussed and that we have clarified quite exhaustively in the national income accounting chapter because how much an, a, a representative family within a country can, or what level of standard of living they can maintain depends on that country how much uh, uh, that country is able to produce goods and services or consumable uh, goods and services, consumable items, okay. That is why, you know, if you, if you can consume more than me, we can tell uh, your standard of living is more than me, right. So, that is the thing in that way. So, now the question is, you, if you see as we told that GDP of United States is very high. GDP of India is little bit less, than, uh, GDP of an African country is very low. Okay. The different countries have different kind of GDP. So, the, the, the point is why this much wide dis, dis, uh, disparity across the GDP of different countries. Okay. So, definitely uh, how, so what is your overall production level of a society or of a country, it depends on what? It depends on definitely one important concept that is called productivity. Productivity, okay. Productivity is basically total production per units of variable input, okay. So, sometimes back we have introduced total product curve. If you can remember, suppose we have this kind of total product curve when we are measuring output in the vertical axis and horizontal axis, suppose our variable input A, x. So, at this point, what is the average product? Average product is basically per unit of variable input, how much total output? So, definitely slope of this straight line. At this point, average product is slope of this straight line. At this point, what is the average product? Slope of this straight line and so on. Okay. So, this average product is called productivity. In your book, you will see that productivity is defined in this way. Output per unit of labor hour. So, by default in your book when productivity is defined, okay, it is assuming that variable input is labor. Okay. So, labor is basically uh, human, uh, human physical and psychological power using which they are contributing to production activity that is called labor, right. Okay. Physical power is called physical labor or manual labor and psychological labor is called say, uh, labor capital sometimes, uh, okay. psychological uh, human capital sometimes it is called human capital, okay. human capital. Okay. 
human capital larger thing it has two component one uh, say physical power okay that is called manual capital manual labor or manual capital and another is uh, psychological level uh, intelligence okay kind of uh, intelligence you have and all those things or uh, not not only intelligence uh, whatever the uh, training you have that also is important right one person one person who is doing uh, manual work mostly right they may not have that much training to be a part of uh, sophisticated production process right so if you have some training right so you are little bit uh, improved or little bit uh, better human capital in that sense you have some knowledge you have some training to how to run a machine like that okay so so this productivity when it is defined what i was telling in your book is assume by default it assumes that um, that that um, variable factor is as if the labor okay it may not be the case uh, whatever being the variable factor there per unit of variable factor whatever total output you are producing that is called productivity or average product is called productivity so definitely total uh, what is the productivity level of different countries right that into amount of uh, productive resources are available in that country that so productivity whatever is there that into say amount of amount of variable input available in that country variable input this product is basically total output total product because productivity total production productivity is defined as productivity is this total production by amount of variable input so definitely total product productivity into amount of variable input will be total production and this total production is the gdp gdp we told that all goods and services total production if you can capture that will be giving you the gdp figure right so definitely that and, and we are telling that gdp is a good measure of uh, prosperity of any country so a country's prosperity level will depends on what is its productivity right if india's productivity is more than say kenyan economy right so india will have better chance to attain higher level standard of living than kenya and so on perhaps us economies their productivity is far better than india okay now the question is what are the factors that determine this productivity four factors are there okay in your book okay four factors are there each of those are Uh, those are positive or uh, each of them positively contribute towards productivity means under the settled sparrows condition if one of those factors improves your productive level uh, productivity level will improve okay so what are those uh, things physical capital physical capital human capital technological know how technological know how and four natural resources okay so physical capital is what machines tools different different types of um, uh, instruments whatever is available using which you can Uh, you can uh, you can produce uh, some goods and services under the settled sparrows condition suppose country a is there and country b is there a and b each of them having the these three factors the same status but a is ahead of uh, country b in physical capital stock so definitely productivity of country a will be uh, better than the productivity of country b okay so what i am telling under the settled sparrows condition each of these factors will positively contribute towards productivity so physical capital as i as we told machines and all see what is machine machine is basically say suppose one machine using one machine uh, say mule one textile machine is called mule okay spinning jenny another textile machine so this kinds of different textile machine so how to convert say uh, say textile different thread or cotton and cotton thread that into cloth there, there is a knowledge 
that knowledge level is there in a human mind we know or the people who are artisans they know. Now, that knowledge level are put into a machine okay, so that that machine can replicate that knowledge level to convert that uh, uh, cotton into cotton thread and all the cotton threads or cotton ropes into cloth. Okay. So, that will help to produce much more faster rate, produce cloth much more faster rate than manual labor perhaps, right. So, that is the thing, so, machine is our instrument, sophisticated instrument is nothing, but the something where technological know-how has been automated into the process, okay. that will help to uh, help us to uh, produce much more faster rate. Okay. That is called physical capital, mostly machines. Human capital, nothing to clarify, it is a uh, human labor force, human beings, they are both physical or manual labor force as well as their psychological labor force, these together called human capital. Okay. Technological know-how again, the technological knowledge level. Okay. These different types of machine, different types of sophisticated technologies, a road, okay. it is a big road is constructed, right. Art style or primitive days people are still, people are cutting uh, marts from the nearby field and with that they are building a highway kind of thing, muddy highway. But these days you will see that big, big machines they are, so one go they are, they are cutting that big place of the land beginning. So, the same work where 100 different workers which that whatever amount of work they can do in a, in a day, perhaps two machines are enough to do that in a day. Okay. So, you need not uh, to depend on that, that many manual workers. Okay. So, that is called technological know how much sophisticated, how much uh, uh, technology is improved, uh, level of technology, how much improved they are, how much sophisticated they are, how much modern they are. Okay. That will definitely contribute, positively contribute to your productivity. Uh, your means here I am talking about the one, one country, okay, an entire country. Natural resource, natural resource given say suppose all these three factors are same in A and B. If country A has more natural resource, it will have uh, more productivity because natural resource also positively contribute towards productivity. What are natural resources? Natural resources is basically amount of cultivable lands, what is available, okay. uh, amount of river, okay. amount of say forest resources, both uh, animal and as well as timber kind of resources, okay. uh, minerals and ores uh, available in the mines okay, and all those things. right? And in fact, um, uh, sometimes say suppose we, we have given some example sometimes back if you can remember, right. Say Japan is a, is a peculiar example where almost no natural resources are there, okay. rather uh, it is more uh, moreover it is more prone to the disaster. Uh, okay, earthquake, uh, tropical tsunami, cyclone these are uh, quite frequent in Japan, but look at here overall standard of living is very high. Because whatever deficiency from natural resource point of view Japan has, it could try to, it could successfully overcome that by successfully applying all these other things, very sophisticated uh, physical capital they have, very advanced level of technology they have, human capitals are also uh, trained and uh, quite, uh, quite what should I say trained, huh? more, more, more. Uh, what should I say trend we can tell okay, more uh, training and all those things they have right. So, using successfully using other three factors of uh, factors although one factor they are not that much efficient or that much they are not that much uh, blessed by the nature okay, they could overcome successfully that and could attain the very high level of productivity as a result they could maintain high, higher standard of living. Alternatively you, you say Kenya one African country full of natural resources are there, okay. but still you will see that it is uh, overall standard of living is very less. Why? Because physical capital, technological capital these are they are very backward. Okay. Human capital are there, but human capital all the whatever is there they are not having enough training to part in the modern technological process or modern production activities. So, that much more faster rate they can produce as a result they can produce more and more goods and services, consumable goods and services. Right. So, that is the thing, these are the four factors okay. and by each of the 
factors what we are referring this is very uh, beautifully uh, explained in your book okay you please go through them and in any case we have clarified that these are the factors which determine productivity level of a country and when productivity level is more it will be having positive implication on that country's overall production level which we call gdp Okay. So, that is the thing the chapter when the production and growth what we are discussing uh, after this four, uh, four factors okay, there is another section that section is called economic uh, growth and public policy economic growth and public policy in the same chapter one, one section is there called say economic growth and public policy. So, as we told that in macroeconomics portion of this course, we are selectively covering important concepts, right. So, in this particular chapter, this section onwards, whatever is there in your chap in your book, we are not covering. So, in this chapter, before this section, whatever is there, we are covering. Okay. We will now move to the another important concepts called employment, unemployment, because in any country, no, unemployment is a, is a major problem. Okay. So, the, now we will discuss that unemployment related, uh, employment, unemployment, those related different concepts and so on that we will discuss in the next lecture. Okay. Let us stop here.